Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and welcome to this week's new episode of Christ and Crafting. I have some fun projects and some fabulous Bible verses to share with you and some thoughts about transformation and looking back over your life to see if it's happening. So as you're hopping on, say hello, let me know where you're watching from, feel free to sprinkle, uh, feel free to ask questions. All that normal good stuff. Okay, so we're going to be using this. This is a kind of Mod Podge that is specifically for fabric. This is my very first time using it. I've been playing with it all morning. <laughs> we did church on TV and then I've been Mod Podging up a storm. Anyways, with this kind of Mod Podge, you are supposed to be able to wash your items. I have not personally tried that out yet. But that would mean that you could make t-shirts and, um, you know, other things that would be likely to need to be washed. So I think it's very cool. It's called Mod Podge Fabric Tissue. I picked mine up on Amazon, but I know for a fact you can get this at Hobby Lobby also. Then we're going to be using some really beautiful paper napkins that have dragonflies on them. We're going to be using one of these little zippered pouches, which I can get you a link for if you want it. And then we're going to be using this large tote bag that also came from Hobby Lobby. Uh, we'll be using a little bit of parchment paper. I'm going to show you the start of the project on this little um, 7x11 pennant banner that you can get at MagnoliaDIY.com. And that's, oh, and the iron. Okay, so it's... This is not difficult at all. Okay, so let me give you a quick little peek of where we're going, and then let's do it. All right, so this is what I've been playing with all morning. This tote has these nice big pockets. Um, it folds out with a flat bottom. And I mod podged the pockets and I mod podged a few of these dragonflies around the top. Um, it's super cute. It needs 72 hours to cure. It's just a little bit tacky but it should be um, totally usable and if I needed to it should even be washable. So isn't that cute? Start thinking seriously um, because you can use this idea for a bunch of different things like t-shirts, uh, tennis shoes, um, we could try tea towels, we could try napkins, we could do pillows, we could do all kinds of things. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Well, the beginning is that you want to get a brush of some sort and your bottle of Mod Podge. And you're going to put a pretty thick, especially at the edges, coat of Mod Podge on with a paintbrush. I'm going to stop right here at this line where the stitching is, where this little pole goes in that I'll show you in just a minute. And um, this stuff really doesn't have a strong odor. Uh, it's a little difficult to get off your hands. It's pretty sticky, uh, but it's super easy to work with. So I would just continue and cover the whole entire thing. Let me do that so we can maybe come back to this. We'll see how much time everything else takes. Going clear out to the edges, like I said before. And you want it to be thick, but not like puddles. So how is everyone doing today? I, um, we're gonna be talking about dragonflies, which I have talked about here during a Christ and Crafting before because they are such a unique creature and they're a great 
symbol of transformation. So I'm gonna share with you a whole bunch of dragonfly facts that you may or may not have known. And then I have some great Bible verses. Okay, so I've just covered the whole entire thing. And except for this top part, that's where this little dowel is gonna go in. And it has a, a string, okay? So I'm gonna lay that aside and let that start drying. And then I'm gonna get the Mod Podge off of my little silicone mat here and my fingers so it doesn't mess up the next step. Okay. And the next step is um, this. Okay, so I have done that exact same thing with this little zippered pouch from magnoliadiy.com and it's a little tacky, but it's mostly dry. And I am going to lift up my iron. I have to burn myself. Let me switch down. And I have a piece of parchment paper. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna decide where we want our design. So when you get your napkins, they're either gonna have two plies or three plies. That's how many thicknesses there are. And what I have found is that the nicer ones, like this is a great brand. This is Cas Caspari. The nicer ones are going to have three plies. So you gotta make sure you get all three of those plies off. And I got this one started. And I'll hang on to this inside part, wipe my hands off on or clean up the towel table or whatnot. Okay, I think I have all three plies off. I'm pretty sure I do. Let me just double check. Yes, I do. Okay, so then I just need to decide where do I want my design to go. And I think I want my design with this edge on it. Um, I'm gonna say that it's gonna go right here. Okay, so this is completely dry, but it is still a teeny bit tacky. My iron is set on cotton, no steam. And what this is doing is it's reactivating the Mod Podge to bond with the napkin. And it makes it so that you're not um, sticking your fingers in sticky Mod Podge. It just makes the whole process a little bit easier, but you can do the old fashioned way. In fact, that's what I did when I um, did the little pieces of just putting some Mod Podge on the back of your paper napkins and then sticking them down and covering them up. Okay. Oh no. Just thinking, do I have two plies? Did I get all the plies off? Gosh, I hope I did. Okay, well we're gonna assume that I did. And this is what it looks like. All right, and I'm going to just trim roughly around the edges. And then we'll apply a little bit more heat. Make sure this puppy is on here for good. So I'm making this little tote bag for myself. I'm about to go on a fun trip um, for a, they're calling it a celebration, but it's like a convention for Magnolia Design Company. And I'm excited about it. And anyways, so I'm making this little pouch here to go inside the bag that I just showed you. Just wanna get the big pieces of excess off. I did this very same thing 
with the tote bag. And I'll show you when we get to that how I laid my napkins down on it. The tote bag came from Hobby Lobby. Um, it was in the area where they have those kind of bags and it was, you guys, it was a good deal. It was under $5, which I thought was fabulous. Okay, I have a little bit of wax or of um, parchment paper inside just to make sure that I didn't glue my two sides together, which would be bad. It would be super embarrassing to do that. Super. Okay, I'm gonna move my iron for just a minute. Back over here. And this is what it looks like right now. Um, I'm gonna apply another thick coat of this fabric Mod Podge. Um, oh, Wave is saying she just did the big bag with the Magnolia gingerbread stencil and it's so cute. That would be adorable, that sounds wonderful. Um, Yeah, that big bag is really, I thought it was a very good deal. This is gonna dry clear. And when I was working on the big bag, at some points I found that it was good to just take my fingers and kind of press the bubbles that were starting to form out. kind of feel like that oil cloth stuff. It makes the fabric much stiffer. And while I'm looking at this right now, I'm starting to doubt myself that I had only one ply because it looks to me a little bit like there's two plies here and that's maybe why it's not sticking as well as when I did the big tote. We're gonna make it work though. I'm just pressing the excess Mod Podge down through the napkin. Your finger does need to be covered to do this or you could tear it. And excess off, it will dry clear. So this is what that looks like right now. You could cut individual pieces and do uh, the back of that if you want it. Okay, let me get this off my fingers because this will drive me crazy. You could do absolutely any kind of napkin that you want. I was looking at some beautiful sunflower napkins and I was going back and forth between the um, sunflower and these and then I decided on this because of the verses that we, we will be talking about. It made more sense to use the um, dragonflies. Okay, so now I want to show you the bag that is ready to go. And what I want to let you know is when I was making it, I folded some parchment paper and I put it in the pockets so that I didn't accidentally glue the pockets closed with my Mod Podge. So it was like this when I was working on it. And then I just took it out. Um, I took two separate napkins and this particular one has this pretty trim. So I laid them with the trim down the center. This is two separate pockets on both sides. And that is how I got this design. And I think the trim on this napkin is fabulous. So I painted the whole thing with the fabric Mod Podge. Then I laid my napkins on and used the iron and some parchment paper to get it attached. Then I put one generous coat 
of the Mod Podge over it when it was dry. And I did essentially the same thing with these little pieces up here at the top. But isn't this cute? And totally usable. After 72 hours, the instructions for this Mod Podge say that it will be ready, um, cured and ready to use. So, yeah, so that's it. So be thinking about what you might want to put on a t-shirt. You could do some really cute sleeves. You could do just like a little design on one corner. You could do something on the back of the t-shirt. Um, all with napkins and Mod Podge uh, and an iron. And when this is all dried and ready to go, I will get pictures and share that with you. And um, let's get ready to go into the Bible and we're gonna talk about transformation. So let me get my junk off my desk here. And it just grab my chair. All right, so um, what I have been thinking about is transformation. And while we've been doing this summer in songs, praising God, um, I wanted to think about transformation and how that is something that we can praise God for. Um, so we're going to start in Psalm 104, verse 24. But let me pray first, and then we'll jump right in. I have about five, four or five Bible verses and some fun facts to tell you about dragonflies. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Lord, thank you that we can craft and talk about you. Lord, thank you that you preserved your word for us so that we can get to know you, so that you can speak to us through your word so that we can learn more about your character and so that we can be ourselves transformed by the renewing of our minds. So I just pray, Lord, that as we go into this, that you will give me the words and the ideas that you would like me to share and that they will go out and reach the people watching in the ways that you would like those words and ideas to reach them. And I just praise you and thank you so much for this privilege of being able to talk and read your word with these people. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so let's start at Psalm 104, verse 24. And what this says... Um, The, t the notes in my Bible, which I'll tell you about my Bible in just a minute, um, give a theme to this book, this chapter, 104, as appreciating God through his creation. And it says, he not only creates, but maintains his creation. The Lord's care is the source of joy. So 104, verse 24 says, How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you make, you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. And when I go down to the note for that specific verse, what it says is creation is filled with stunning variety, revealing the rich creativity, goodness, and wisdom of our loving God. As you observe your natural surroundings, thank God for his creativity. Take a fresh look at people seeing each one as God's unique creation, each with his or her own special talents, abilities, and gifts. And um, what I really like about this verse is, is that it clearly states that God is the creator and that he created a stunning variety of different creatures on the earth. 
So he created whales and he created lions and he created humans and he created dragonflies. And there is such a huge difference between each one of those creatures and how all their systems work, how intricate everything is. Um, they're all obviously part of a design. They're not something that has just by evolution happened. Um, so today we're gonna look at dragonflies and how they are a symbol of transformation. And um, before I go into God's word, I took a few minutes to look um, on the internet to see some of the different things that you might not be aware of about dragonflies, because I always think this is interesting. Okay, dragonflies were one of the very first insects to inhabit the planet over 300 million years ago, is what scientists say. Okay, now, in God's time, I don't know uh, how that all boils down, because time to God is not the same as time to humans and scientists. So, um, Anyway, so a long, 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 long time ago, dragonflies were one of the first insects. Um, they are interesting because they change from one creature to something different. They change from a larvae um, into a beautiful dragonfly. They're born underwater and they spend the majority of their lives underwater. Um, let's see, what is it called? As in the larval phase is what it's called, um, uh, getting their oxygen through water and eating under underwater items. And then um, when they reach the stage where they're ready to molt or crack open that shell that has the underwater creature, out pops a dragonfly that is capable I'm flying forwards, backwards, up, down, side to side, and hovering. Um, and I just think that is so interesting. They, um, they have very large complex eyes that give them nearly 360 degrees vision. Um, generally, they're between two and five inches from their, their wingspan span from one side to the other. But scientists have found fossils with dragonflies in them that had up to two and a half feet long wingspans. Um, and here's one more fact that I think is um, good, especially if you're not inclined to like dragonflies. Did you know that they can eat up to 100 insects per day? 100 mosquitoes, as a matter of fact. So that's a good thing. Um, so let's talk about how they are the symbol of change and transformation because they're essentially changing from something that lives underwater uh, for the majority of its life to something that lives outside of the water. Their, their form is even changing. And both forms, if you look at them separately, they're both very complex and intricate. Um, so, and I want us to kind of think about how our Christian lives are being transformed and changed by our relationship with Jesus Christ. So when I think about transformation, a couple of verses popped right into my head. And the, the one that came first is one that you may be familiar with. It's in the book of Romans. It's um, chapter 12, verse 2. I could almost quote this to you in the NIV translation, um, just off the top of my head. It says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So we're not to conform to the ways of this world, we're to transform ourselves by the renewing of our mind. And how do we renew our mind? Uh, we do that by uh, growing our relationship 
with God by being in his word, uh, by prayer, through our relationships, through our priorities. Um, when we make God the center of our life, that's how we can transform our minds. But it doesn't happen uh, just, you know, at a certain time like it does with the dragonfly. The dragonfly is just swimming around as a larvae, larvae underwater and then something tells it to come up out of the water and it cracks open and out pops a dragonfly. But it's not the same with us. It's something that we have to actually do. And um, it says us to us that we are not to conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Um, so, let's see, I'm just looking at some of my notes here. Um, in one of these, it says, Christian, one of the notes, oh, and let me tell, tell you about my Bible. Okay, this is a life application study Bible in the New International Version, NIV. I've had it for over 20 years. It's nothing fancy. I have written my life in it, which I, I mean, I'm looking at notes from 2013 that I wrote something. I have scribbles all over in my Bible. But it has these great notes that can help a verse, um, can help you understand in a little deeper way what the different verses are. And sometimes it's just them telling you what was happening at that time in history because it's hard to understand some of the verses because we don't understand the way people lived 2,000 or more years ago. Um, but anyways, so if, you're, if you don't have a paper Bible that um, is in a translation that speaks to you, I really encourage you to get one because life is hard and going through life, being being able to hold God's word in your hands, being able to learn about him, being able to actually hear him speaking to you, seeing how things change over time when you're in God's word, that is so important. And um, I would encourage you to get a Bible in this life application series because of the great notes, but I would encourage you to choose a translation that speaks to you the best, whether that's King James, uh, ESV, NASB, NIV, The Message, whatever translation speaks most clearly to you. And um, I can give you a website where you can go and look at Bibles online. I have absolutely nothing to do with it. I don't make any money on the sale of Bibles. I just want you to have God's word in your hand and be able to write your life into a Bible and read and understand what God's word says. So let me know if you want a link to the place to look at Bibles. Okay, so um, the notes here say, uh, Christians are called to not conform any longer to the pattern of this world with its behavior and customs that are usually selfish and often corrupting. Many Christians wisely decide that much worldly behavior is off limits for them. Our refusal to conform to this world's values, however, must go even deeper than the level of behavior and customs. It must be firmly planted in our minds. Um, and to, to transform and renew our mind. It is possible to avoid most worldly customs and still be proud, covetous, selfish, stubborn, and arrogant. Only when the Holy Spirit renews, re-educates, and redirects our minds are we truly transformed. Okay, and then something I scribbled down here below. I was probably in church and my pastor probably was preaching a message on transformation. And I wrote, renew your mind. When you see as God sees, you will be more inclined to do what God says. So I have that written right there at the bottom. Uh, so tra tra 
transforming ourselves is is a work of the Holy Spirit and God, but we have a part to play in it. We're, we don't just pop open with the new dragonfly wings like the dragonflies do. Okay, now let's go to 1 Peter, chapter one. And um, I'm gonna read from three to nine, and then I'm gonna read from 13 to 14. Okay. Um, and this little bit is labeled praise to God for a living hope. It says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Um, in this, you greatly rejoice, though for a while you may have had to suffer in all kinds of grief and trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fi fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Um, so this is talking about a new birth. Um, that only Jesus Christ can give us. And then if you go a little bit further on, let's see, did I want to tell you something about the notes? Oh, okay, so my first note here says, the term new birth refers to spiritual birth, regeneration, the Holy Spirit's act of bringing believers into God's family. Jesus used this concept of a new birth when he explained salvation to Nicodemus in John chapter three. And I wrote underneath that it's an inward change. Okay, if we go a little bit further into this chapter, from 13 to 14, it says, therefore, prepare your minds for action. That's something we have to do, prepare our minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in, in ignorance. So this is talking about that um, not conforming to the patterns of the world, but being transformed and that it is something that we do. Um, this says, prepare your minds for action. Okay, and then in Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 17 to 24, this, um, this little bit of scripture is labeled living as children of the light. And it says, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They, I'm just checking to make sure I started at the right spot. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in 
true righteousness and holiness. So this is again talking more about transformation and our part in it and just um, how that change takes place. And in the notes, um, our old way of life before we believed in Christ is completely in the past. We should put it behind us like old clothes to be thrown away. Okay, this is important. This is both a once for all decision when we decide to accept Christ's gift of salvation and it's also a daily conscious commitment on our part. We are not to be driven by the desire and impulses of our old way of life. We must put on the new role, head in the new direction, and have the new way of thinking that the Holy Spirit gives. Isn't that good? Oh my gosh. And then this note here says, um, let's see. People should be able to see a difference between Christians and non-Christians because of the way Christians live. We are to live as children of light. Paul told the Ephesians to leave behind the old life of sin since they were followers of Christ. Living the Christian life is a process. Although we have a new nature, we don't automatically think all good thoughts and express all right attitudes when we become new people in Christ. But if we keep listening to God, we will be changing all the time. As you look back over the last year of your life, do you see a process of change for the better in your thoughts, attitudes, and actions? Although change may be slow, it comes as you trust God to change you. And um, that really is the whole point of today's craft, looking at transformation and talking about the dragonfly and talking about our role in, trans in being transformed. That we have part of um, that role of renewing our minds and not conforming to the ways of the word world. So I encourage everyone watching to think back over the last year of your life, just like this note here in my Bible says, and to ask yourself, am I being transformed? Am I still conforming to the ways of the world? Um, and maybe we are in some ways, but in other ways we're starting to change. I'm not saying it's an all or nothing thing, but are we, do we see a process of change for the better in our thoughts, attitudes, and actions? Are we putting in good and throwing out the old bad? Um, so I hope this was an encouragement and I hope as you look back over your last year, that, um, that you will see that there are signs of change, whether you're a brand new Christian or have been one for your whole entire life. It's a lifetime daily commitment that um, we'll be going through our whole entire lives here on earth. So I hope that that is encouraging to you to see that. And if you aren't seeing the kind of change, uh, transformation that you want, I just want to encourage you that you can change it, that you just can pray to God for help. You can be deliberate in the things that you do, where you spend your time, who you spend your time with, um, all those kind of things. So uh, today, see, I'm just reading the comments. Today's world is particularly hard and rough, rough and wicked. Um, so let's, you and I, as followers of Jesus Christ, let's don't conform to this world. Let's be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And then we will be able to test and approve what God's will, God's good will is for us. And let me just pray and then we'll finish up. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for these verses. 
And thank you, Lord, that we are, once we um, put our faith in your son, Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior, that, that you are in process of transforming us every day. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that comes to live in us when we make that decision for Jesus Christ. Help us to be open to see what is really going on around ourselves. Help us to put good in and to throw off all the old bad and just uh, walk forward towards you in a, a deliberate manner, um, keeping you as our focus. Lord, so I just thank you that you do that, that you love us, Lord. Thank you that you've preserved your word um, as an encouragement for us, as a way also for us to uh, transform our minds, to renew our minds. So I just thank you for everything, Lord. Um, I know there's a lot of people out here who are going through hard things. And while I don't know what all of those are, Lord, you do. Um, so I just pray this week in particular that you will... I know you will. You'll be there with those people because you always are. But that you'll help them to feel you, to sense you, to trust you, to rely on you more. And to remember that you have a good plan for them. Even though we can't always see everything going on, you have a good plan. Um, so I just pray that the people going through hard things, that they will be able to draw near to you. And that they will see your presence in, in their lives. And um, I just thank you for this day. Thank you for these Bible verses. Thank you for allowing me the greatest honor of my whole entire life of crafting and talking about you and your word. And I pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So that is what I wanted to talk to you about and show you today. This was our project. If you missed the beginning of it, I showed you how to use fabric Mod Podge to put paper napkins on this cloth bag and on the little zip pouch that I have back here that is still drying. Um, so if you missed that, feel free to come back and to watch this video from the start on replay. Um, anyways, I hope that this was a blessing to you. Thank you um, for watching. Thank you for encouraging me with your kind words. And have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you tomorrow for more crafts here at DIY Dreaming that are going to be quick and easy. You don't have to be an expert crafter or have fancy tools to do them. They're going to be affordable. They're going to be sometimes a little different, like putting a, a paper napkin of dragonflies on a canvas bag um, but most of all they're gonna either involve faith family or flowers so if you like those things I hope you'll come back to DIY dreaming and I would love it if you would sprinkle this video to your social media let me know if you have questions let me know if you want that link to go look at the life application study Bibles or if you want any other information about any things that I use today, just let me know. Alrighty, have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys later.